This video is part two of a series. In part one, we shaped the body of this AWM sniper rifle. And in this part, we're gonna start adding some details to this model. And we're gonna start focusing more on hard surface modeling. If you have any questions along the way, just feel free to drop them down in the comments because I always try to answer as many questions as I can. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. All right, let's continue and let's start adding some of the hard surface modeling parts. All right, let's continue and let's start adding some of the hard surface modeling parts here, which means we're going to be adding this hinge here. We're going to be adding this part down here, the stabilizer, the stock, the barrel and all that stuff. Now I pulled a little reference image over here, and this is another 3D model uh, from an artist called Vieslau Budzik. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I hope I don't get any copyright trouble for showing this picture and using it as a reference. But it is a very impressive model. And I'm going to use this as a reference just to, uh, to look at some of the details here. So I can see that uh, this uh, sniper rifle from all different angles. Which is what this image does very well. So let's take a look down here. We want to find a picture. You don't have a very clear picture of what's happening down here at the bottom of the buttstock. But I think this is a pretty simple shape. So what we're going to do there is we're just going to place our 3D cursor down here and add, add a cube, which looks more like a sphere when we add it with our subdivision surface modifier, but that's all right. We're going to pull it all the way out here. And we're going to use this cube to model out uh, this shape at the bottom here first before we proceed. So let's delete the face at the back. And... Uh, we're going to add loop cuts to the top and loop cuts to the bottom. And also loop cut over here. We also want to add some smooth shading to that. And we also want to extrude this part downwards a little bit. So let's add another loop cut back here. And then we're going to take a face from the back. Maybe this should be a little wider. We're going to take a face from the back at the bottom there. We're going to extrude it once just a little bit. I'm going to extrude it one more time, or that's not quite going to give us the result we want. So let's just extrude it right away, right away, and pull it down. And then we're going to add a couple more loop cuts just to flatten this out appropriately. Something like that. And uh, to my understanding, this is more or less the shape that we need, except it should be quite a bit more narrow. So let's scale it down on the x axis should be more narrow than the rest of the stock. So let's pull that up. Let's pull that up and let's just take this entire selection up here. And let's delete that just to make sure that this is going to be completely, uh, completely flat at the top here. Okay, and now this looks like it's, it's like it's a separate object. Which it almost is. And now we have that part there. And uh, let's go back here and work on or maybe it'll be better if we just work on the screws before we get on any other part. So let me show you how to make these holes for the screws. Thankfully, we are still using a subdivision service modifier, which means that if we take a face like this and we extrude it, scale it inwards, or it's essentially the same as inserting a face. We insert a face there, and now we're gonna use our loop tools to form this into a circle. If you don't have your loop tools activated, you just go to Edit, References, you go to your add-ons, and you search for Loop Tools, and you just enable this uh, add-on right there. And it's going to give you a bunch of different uh, tools for manipulating edges, for smoothing edges, relaxing edges. We're going to use some of those later, so you're going to see how that works. But if you have any questions about that, just feel free to let me know in the comments. So we have a little square here, and when we extrude that inwards, it makes a perfectly circular hole. So this is exactly the kind of hole that we need to place our screw inside of. Just a couple of loop cuts, and this is pretty much perfect. And now we're going to go around and do that wherever else we need to have a hole for a screw. So we're going to push this edge loop a little bit forward, and then we're going to add another loop cut here, insert another face here, the same way that we already did before. Okay. Same way, and we're going to use our loop tools Make a circle out of that and bring it down a little. 
bring it down a little and then extrude that inwards. And then of course, a couple more loop cuts just to make it a little bit more straight like that. Now maybe we have a little bit too much loop cutting going on here. So we're gonna remove one of the loop cuts and maybe we're gonna push this away just a little bit so as to get rid of this little unwanted sharp edge there. But I think this is all right. And now this is also happening on the other side as well, which is good because uh, it seems that the screws are symmetrical on both sides. Let's see on this side, we see our screws like this. And on this side, they seem to be placed in a similar way. Anyway, let's just pretend that they're completely symmetrical just so we don't have to go through the hassle of doing them twice for the video. But if you want to, you can make them different on both sides, of course. And then we're going to do the same thing as many times as we need to until we make every single screw on the uh, on the gun. Now this is a very, very tricky screw here in the middle. This one is not going to be so easy to make at all because we have all these different faces here. So how can we do that? Let's take some of these, some of these, uh, Faces here. Thankfully, this is a very, a very uh, flat shape. We're gonna take a couple of these faces in the front here, extrude those, scale them down, scale them down, scale them down on the Z axis primarily. Then we're gonna deselect the ones in the middle. We're gonna see how well we can turn those into a circle without making too much of a topological mess there. And as you can see, everything is still uh, still connected. There's not too much overlapping, or not any overlapping as far as I can see. So we have a pretty good circle there. And this should, should be just fine. You can't really see that anything is wrong uh, over there. Once we extrude that, we get a little bit of trouble. But let's see if we can fix that. See if we can fix that by moving some of these edges a little bit, a little bit away. We're going to select everything. We're gonna select everything there, and then let's see what happens. We also need to select the, the faces in the middle. And we're gonna move everything a little bit further to the side, just a little bit, just to get it away from this part here. Because as you can see, this is not really, not really perfect on the shading. But maybe if we bring this edge loop a little closer, it's gonna tighten it gonna make it less noticeable for sure. And afterwards, when we texture this, it's also gonna be even less visible. So this is all right. And this should be all the screws that we need here. So let's go ahead and add a loop cut right there, right across the middle, all around the entire model. And then we're gonna go to top view and we're gonna delete the entire left side of the model. So let's select a loop cut just so we can see we're selecting everything to the left, everything to the left of this middle loop cut. And then we're going to delete only those faces. And we're going to go ahead and add a mirror modifier, which we're going to place above the subdivision surface modifier. Let's also correct our origin. This also should have been cut by a loop. We're going to place our 3D origin right there, and then everything connects perfectly. And we have symmetrical screws on both sides. Now that is perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding some of these details here. For example, let's start by just adding the screws since we already created the screw holes. And that's gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna add a circle there, a circle with let's say 24 vertices. We want a nice level of detail on this high poly model, okay? I'm going to scale that way down, way down, so it fits perfectly into the hole. Okay, let's move it outward so we can see whether it fits like that. And then inside, we want to have a kind of hexagonal, hexagonal uh, hole. Is it a hexagon or an octagon? I can't quite see because it's not quite close enough. But I'm going to assume that it's a hexagon. Maybe we can see better in a reference image. No, we can't. Let's just go with the hexagon then. Six vertices, align with the view, 
and scale it all the way down so it fits inside this little circle. Like that. We're going to select these two edge loops and we're going to bridge the edge loops. Now this is going to be quite messy if we do that, so maybe we should just manually connect some of these parts. Manually connect uh, the edge loops. So one of these interfaces is going to connect into four of the outer ones. And then we uh, we still can't quite select the entire edge loop there, but that's all right. I'm going to extrude everything inwards. I'm going to separately extrude this part. And if we push this backwards like that, we are going to uh, remove some of these unwanted, unwanted uh, edges here, just so we can more easily select everything. Add a little bevel there and a little bevel in the middle. This is going to significantly help with our shading. And maybe we'll make the whole thing a little bit more narrow like that. And also it might be helpful. It might be helpful to uh, add some bevels to the inner edges. Okay, so let's select all those and add a small bevel to them, like so. And just some smooth shading, which we're going to correct by tearing all the vertices. Let's get rid of some of these unwanted edges here again, which we got as a result of the bevel. We're going to select the entire loop around here. We're going to tear that. And we're going to do the same thing around the screw there. Okay. Now we just removed all our doubles, so we're going to have to do it again. Removed all our doubles there, so here we go. Correct the normals. And we're also going to tear the face at the bottom, which is not going to quite work as we had imagined. So maybe we'll just extrude it one more time. And then it's going to give us the shape that we want for our screw. All right. Now we can take this screw. We can take this screw and we can duplicate it to all the other places where we want the screw. So we're going to place the origin right there in the back. And I think the hole in this screw is a little bit too large still. Maybe we're still going to scale that down a little bit more. Just a little more, something like that. And now the origin is in the middle of the screw, which we want to place at the bottom of the hole. So then if we place the origin at the bottom of the hole, or the 3D cursor at the bottom of the hole, we can duplicate this screw and just snap it to the 3D cursor. And then we can just scale it up according to the other hole and make it larger or smaller if need be. We're going to do that wherever else it is necessary. And just try to fill up all these holes uh, with the screws. Okay. We might have to take some time to line these because they're not always perfectly perfectly circular, the holes. We might have to take a bit of time to, uh, to make sure that they fit in there correctly, like so. And this one is also a little bit too large, so we're going to scale it down a little so we can see the edges, like so. This one here is going to be a little more tricky. It's going to be a little more tricky because we're going to have to rotate it into place rotate it into place and then scale it up accordingly. And this is not a perfectly flat hole either, so this is not gonna be the easiest thing ever. But we can just kind of rotate it and get, get it into place at a reasonable level. Okay, so let's do the same thing on all the other places as well. Just gonna snap this, this uh, screw over there. This hole is maybe a little bit too large, so we're, we're just gonna scale the hole entire hole down a little bit. Okay, let's scale all that down a little more. Just so it fits this screw a little bit better. And maybe we can also make it a little bit more circular while we're at it. Something like that. There we go. We're going to bring the screw over here as well. Over here to this hole, which also, I feel that it should be a little bit scaled down. And it might also help resolve some of the shading issues around the hole as well. 
And then we only have a couple more of these uh, simple holes here in the front. We're gonna bring our 3D cursor there and just snap the screw into that hole, which once again, we're gonna scale down just a little bit. So it fits around the screw, so it hugs the screw a little bit better. Okay, let's snap that into place again. This time we're gonna scale the screw down a little bit. It doesn't matter if all the screws are not consistent in size. I think it's not really an issue. See this hole, I'm also gonna scale it down a little bit just, because, just for convenience, so the edges are not as sharp. And that's gonna pretty much put all of our screws into place. Now we can take our time to, uh, we can take all the screws and uh, we can parent them to one object in the middle, which might be something like an empty cube, okay? And pull pull this cube up and then take all the screws or even if we don't do that we can just merge all the, the all the uh, screws into one single object so we're gonna join those together and then whenever we pull one screw we pull all the others as well and we don't even need an empty for that and this way we can also just duplicate the screws we can mirror them duplicate them and mirror them across the x-axis with a 3d cursor in the middle and as a pivot point and by doing so, we automatically snap all the screws into all the holes on the other side as well. Now perhaps it will be wiser to use a mirror modifier here as well, just because we're going to have to make some more adjustments. We're going to have to make some more adjustments there. Now for some reason, we need to set, a, need to set our origin in the middle there. And then we need to, for instance, make this screw go a little bit further, a little bit further inwards, like that. And then we want to check if there's any other screws uh, which are sticking out a little bit too far, or which are buried in a little too deep. And if there are any such screws, we're just going to correct them. But in this case, I think we're fine. Now that'll be our screws. And uh, we can parent those to the rest of the shape, the same way we can parent this to the main body, parent those. And then let's make this little hinge here in the middle. Little hinge, let's take a look at it from this side over here. This is going to be the side that we're looking at. And uh, let's go over here, let's fill his face in. Fill in this face, we're gonna do that manually. Maybe we could have just used a grid fill face grid fill that's not going to work in this case that's all right we'll just do it manually shoot this flatten it out down there flatten that out i've got this edge loop here which is giving me a little bit of trouble it's probably why it wouldn't let us uh it's probably why it wouldn't let us connect the edges. So what we can do about that, let's see what's happening there. We have this edge it goes all the way over here. And then over here it stops. But we still need this edge to be here. But it stops here, it doesn't proceed, doesn't continue on the other side. Does it? It does, but it goes in a slightly different, slightly different path, right? So this is a little bit of tricky topology over here that we're gonna just maybe fix by filling in and gone there because it doesn't make too much of a difference anyway. We're not gonna do anything else here, so we don't need any clean topology there. And now we can just continue. We can add a plane, add us a plane there. Okay, let's make sure that this plane kind of bridges between the two parts of the body of the gun. Okay, like so, but it also kind of sticks out a little bit. Also sticks out a little bit. Now we're going to lift this entire, entire part upwards a little bit.
Let's select everything above the screws here. And just lift it up so that it's leveled with uh, the other side. Okay. And that way the plane pretty much bridges them perfectly. And we can make an extrusion there. Should be a little bit narrower because there's another part to this hinge over there. Just extrude that and use some bevels. Use some bevels there. We're going to scale up a little. Some bevels there. And uh, then we're going to duplicate those bevels. Or we're going to duplicate this whole shape and bring it down to the bottom. Like so. And we are going to also bevel the other parts here. So first of all, we're going to pull this backwards a little bit. Now, again, uh, we don't have a perfect reference for what the other side looks like. I don't have that many pictures here. Maybe I have it over here. Oh, we do. That's perfect. In this case, this means that we are going to uh, extrude these two faces out. And then we're going to connect these two objects by merging these two loop cuts or bridging these two loop cuts. And then we just want to kind of, uh, we want to bevel these edges like so. We want them to have approximately the same, uh, the same width as the rest of the gun here. So we're going to move apart some of these edges. We're going to bevel that accordingly. Okay, so we're going to bevel this part like so. We're going to bevel this part approximately like so. But more or less fits with the rest of the shape. We can bring this back. Bring this back just to avoid any unnecessary issues with the edges there. Now we got the first piece out of the way here. But we still want to uh, create this little part here in between them. Uh, in between these two slabs which is going to connect uh, this shape to the front part of this, uh, of this gun here. So we're going to add a cube for that. We're gonna scale the cube up a little and just make sure it fits. Uh, it fits into this shape here, but we don't want it to have the exact same shape. We're gonna bevel it, but we're gonna make sure we're gonna intentionally make it so it doesn't perfectly fit in there, just because that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. I think. Gonna make it look a little bit more realistic. We're just gonna kind of fit it in there somehow. Now don't worry, because we're also gonna bevel all of this a little bit more. Maybe we're also going to add some subdivision surface to make this look, uh, have the same kind of shapes and same kind of shading as the rest of the object. But we're going to take this part back here, this part here, and we're just going to extrude that towards the rest of the gun. And uh, let's also separate that to a new object, okay? And now maybe we can go ahead and add those subdivision surface modifiers. Well, now it's a little bit too late for subdivision surface because we have bevels and bevels never really work too well with subdivision surface. So instead, we're just going to add more bevels to make these edges look a little bit softer. Okay, so let's select all the edges on the outside of these shapes here. Okay, all the outer edges there, including these. We're just going to add a pretty narrow uh, bevel right there like that. And that just makes the shading a little bit nicer there. Okay, now it looks a little bit more like the rest. And we're going to do the same thing over here. So uh, we're going to scale all this down a little and then extrude this part up and this part down. Okay, and then we're going to deselect this and then just also add another little bevel there. And that's going to make this part nicely uh, fit right there. Let's also add some. Uh, some auto smooth of that. And then the last part we need here, I think this is the last part, apart from some of the small details, is this little piece connecting it. And to do that, we're just going to add a plane right there. Okay, we're gonna rotate that plane, bring it down into place. And uh, let's bring that backwards here. And let's try to kind of align it with the rest of the shape again. Now it should be sticking out a little bit, as you can see should be sticking out a little bit on this side, but it's gonna have a sort of a, a ring there. It's gonna have a little hole. This is where I imagine you put the strap 
carrying the gun around. But other than that, it's just a simple plane, which is extruded to reach this part like that. So we're going to get a little bit imaginative here. We're going to get uh, two loop cuts, or one loop cut down the middle with a bevel. Then we can extrude these two edges right here. I'm going to pull them out a little bit more. Extrude these two edges, extrude them again. And then we're going to uh, we're going to fill those edges in together. Okay, so we're going to fill, delete these two faces and then bridge these two edge loops. And now we can just put a nice wide bevel on all of these edges here. We're going to remove these edges from the side so we can also put, put some... Uh, some bevels on the inside. But we're going to remove all these edges here that we don't need. It's going to be more visible if we lift this upwards a little bit. Let's put this aside. And then we're going to remove all these flat edges here in the middle. Okay, dissolve those edges. We're going to have to keep some because you can, you know, every time you have a hole, you need two edges connecting that hole to the rest of the shape. But it's not a problem because we can still add our uh, our bevels there with no problem, I imagine. Or not. That means we're going to have to do something else here. Let's go back down. Okay. Let's go back down here. And we're going to add a cube. Let's say we're going to add a cube there. Scale it down, way down. And first we're going to shape the hole. Okay. We're going to use this cube to shape the hole. Let's move it out here a little bit. And uh, so we're going to scale it up like that. Fill it up, and then we are going to simply bevel all these edges like that. We're going to extrude this and scale it out a little bit. Scale it out like that. That's something that we only want the outer edge loop, and we're going to scale it up like this. And now if we delete these two faces in the middle, and we bridge these edge loops, now we have a nice hole, something like what we need, except we're going to delete all these faces from top to bottom here. I'm going to select everything, extrude it, scale it down to zero on the x-axis and pull it across to the other side. Okay. Now if we move this up a little, now we can go ahead and get rid of some of these extra edges, which are only going to get in the way. I'm going to get rid of all these unnecessary edges here. But we're also going to try to get rid of some of these, some of these edges over here, except this one up here. So dissolve these edges and dissolve these on the other side as well. And now this should, this should, uh, this pretty much gives us all the edges that we need here, but we, we, we don't have too many of them. So now we can just go ahead and bevel this. Let's first add a bevel to these corners here, just a little bit like that. Then we're going to add a bevel to the inner edges like that. And this is just for the shading uh, aspect. We're adding these small edges because or these small bevels because it's going to shade the edges a lot more nicely and it's going to look a lot more realistic and smooth together with the subdivision surface modifier on the rest of the object. So shade this smooth and turn on auto smooth and then just bring this down a little bit. So back by 0 0.1 or by minus 0 0.1 just to fit it back into place. And we're also going to scale this down. We're going to flatten it out a little bit just to just to bring it so that it fits inside uh, inside this little gap here. Okay, so let's make sure that everything falls into place there. You might want to close up this gap a little bit more. We're also going to do that over here. Something like that. And that's going to cut it. I am also going to lift it up a little bit more. Lift it up a little there. At the bottom it doesn't match perfectly, but that's not really a problem. Maybe we can also lower it a little, just to kind of cover that part up a little better. But I think this is alright. Now this part might be a little too thick. I'm going to narrow this down. Make it thinner. And instead we're going to take this part, with our 3D cursor over here, we're going to scale everything up on the y-axis like this. And then we're going to let it connect here nicely. 
Now, I'm not too happy with how this turns out, but uh, I think it's a little bit too thick. So what we could do is just take everything and scale it down on the x-axis, make it less evident, less evident like that, make it a little bit smaller. Now we're just going to merge those two objects together, just leave them there. You can spend some more time. Uh, if I wasn't recording this, I would take my time to remodel this from the beginning, but I think it's good enough. It's not too bad, so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now, if you want to, of course. You can give it as many attempts as you like. And now since we scaled one part up, we also have to correct the other part as well. Let's scale this back and fit it back into place. Okay. And also lift it up a little so it connects up here. And we're also going to have to pull it down a little bit more. Something like that. And now that looks good. Let's also just add, add a, a little cylinder there. Cylinder with some 24 vertices. Scale that down. Like this. Make it a little bit wider. And we're also going to give it a nice bevel right there. And this, I imagine, is a button which you use for folding the stock or something like that anyway. I'm going to shade everything smooth. Correct the normals and everything. I'm going to delete this face back here. And there we have it. Let's see if we have anything left over on the other side here. We might have some uh, little circular holes up here. So let's insert a face there. Take all these edges. Loop tools. Circle. Just rotate this into place. So all the edges are aligning at a reasonable, in a reasonable fashion, like that. I'm going to extrude that inwards a little bit, like so. And we're going to bevel these two edge loops. There we have it. Okay, now we're also going to uh, cut some of these edges. We're going to cut some of these edges just to get rid of the, the shading issues there. And we have that little dent on top there. Maybe we're, we're going to scale it down a little bit. Maybe we're going to scale that down just a little bit, including this outer edge. Okay, scale that down just a little bit. And push it forward. There we go. And that should do it for this, uh, this entire little detail, this entire little hinge connecting these two parts. Now the next part we're going to move on to is going to be the stock back here. And as a matter of fact, it turns out that we do indeed have have uh, this hole on both sides. So let's go back here and, and may, uh, work on the stock. Let's place our 3D cursor right there. Let's see what our stock looks like. I think this is just a circ uh, oval shape, more or less. So we're going to add a big cube there. A cube. To which, of course, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to shade that smooth right away. Okay. I'm going to delete the front and the back faces just so it turns into a cylinder. And now we can do whatever we want with this, with this uh, cylinder here. So we're going to use it to roughly shape our stock. Okay. Which means we're going to have to pull this up a little more like that. I'm going to pull this part down so it gets all the way to the bottom there. All right. Now, if needed, from top view, we don't have uh, much of a reference, but I am going to expand it a little bit, make it a little bit wider. I'm going to add some loop cuts there, at least one loop cut. These are one loop cut, and then I'm going to scale the top and the bottom down on the x-axis while making sure that it doesn't clip through anywhere. Okay. And then let's see, we need to take this, shoot it once again here. And then in the back, we have this uh, slightly different shape going on. So we're going to begin this shape over here. Okay. Duplicate this into a new one. Extrude that out and use that to make our different shape here. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna pull these parts outwards a little bit, just so they give us this different shape here, and uh, maybe later we can use some proportional editing to get it to get it to look a little bit nicer. But another edge loop there, just to get everything in place, and as you can see, we also have a narrower rim part here. So we're gonna add loop cut there, extrude this and scale it down, or desolidify it. Alt S and just scale it down a little bit. And then of course a couple more loop cuts there to sharpen that part a little bit. Both on the inside and on the outside. And of course we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill in this part here. And the number of loop cuts to make this part sharper. Okay. Let's merge all this together. And now this is more or less the stock shape that we need. If you want, you can of course make this stick out a little bit more or a little bit less. But I think I'm gonna leave mine. Maybe I'm gonna pull it down a little more. A little more like that. You can play around with this a little more if you like, of course. And let's see what's happening in the back of this shape. The back of this shape, we have some more holes for the screws means we're going to insert a face right there. I'm only going to make two, two screws. I'm only going to make two screws right there because I don't want to go through the hassle of cutting in three faces. We're going to go with two screws there. Okay. Loop tools, circle those, and then just uh, also make sure that they're in the middle. Okay roughly in the middle at least. And then we're going to take these two and we're going to extrude them inwards. One more time. A loop cut up here and a loop cut down here. And it seems like the screws that we have here are a little different. So let's go ahead and add, add a we're gonna align our view, shift seven to align our view with this hole here. We're gonna add a circle with say 24 vertices. We're gonna align that with our view as well. And on this circle, we're going to join join uh, the opposite the opposite uh, vertices. Gonna fill them in. Now maybe uh, I think these are not perfectly opposite, so let's let's do these and these. I think these two, these are going to be perfect. So we can fill this shape in, extrude it out, and then extrude out one more part so it has this kind of a minus shape, a minus shape on the screw, which seems to be the case over here. Okay, I'm going to bevel those a little. And then we're going to scale this screw way down, way down so it fits perfectly and snugly into this hole here. And let's just, let's just make sure that the, the origin, origin is in place. Shade that smooth. Correct the normals. And uh, let's also pair some of the uh, edges here to prevent shading issues. Pair some of those edges. Maybe we just use auto smooth, it's gonna be better. Auto smooth about 45 degrees and that's gonna that's gonna be good. And then we're just gonna duplicate that screw and bring it up here and rotate it a little bit to make some variation. And of course this screw is gonna have a slightly different angle. But I think this is just right. There we go. We're gonna parent those to the rest of the object. Hmm. Now we're gonna do one more detail here before we move on to our break. And that's gonna be this part at the bottom here. And that part at the bottom is, is quite straightforward. It's just a screw, screw shape. And to do that screw shape, we're gonna take a, uh, we're gonna use a screw modifier. So let's take a plane. Let's collapse everything into one edge. Okay. Now we have into one vertex rather. We have one vertex here, which we're going to have. We're going to pull it out, pull it outwards to the side a little bit. 
and uh, this is going to be what we're going to use with our screw modifier. So when we go ahead and add our screw modifier there, you can see it makes one little ring out of that. Okay, one little ring like that. Maybe we can add two more. I have a separate tutorial for uh, how to use a screw modifier to make some screws. So if you're interested, just do check that out. You can find it on my channel. But uh, let's go ahead and set the screw, uh, screw length to whatever the length of this here is. Length, maybe we should have thought about that in advance. Okay, let's go ahead and make a plane. Scale it down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Rotate by 90 degrees. Now we know this has a length of, this has a length of 0 0.01, okay? So now we can use a screw modifier on that, 0 0.01 or minus 0 0.01. Okay, so we're also gonna push this out so it's, it's a little bit wider. Let's make sure we have the right width there. Okay, a little bit more. A little bit more and of course it should also be uh, thinner so let's uh, scale this to one quarter of what it is now we're gonna do the same here 0 0.25 like that 360 and iterations many as we need of course this shouldn't be that sharp at all we're gonna kind of make it a little bit more narrow and we're not going to go too far into detail with this screw here. But let's see how far we're going to take this. Let's say about 30. 30 rotations or 32 rotations is going to be fine. Let's do 35 just to be safe. Then we can cut off the rest. I don't think that's going to be quite necessary. 33. And uh, I'm going to take this now. And we're going to place uh, a circle here at the top just to hold this in place. 24 vertices is fine. Circle up here. We're going to extrude that out. And let's see if we can make this fit nicely there. Scale this up a little more. Pull this up. Okay. And uh, make sure it doesn't clip through because then we're going to add a bevel right there. Bevel there and a bevel there. Okay, I'm gonna add some smooth shading to that, of course, and to this as well. This already has smooth shading, so that's good. We can apply this, remove the doubles, remove the double vertices, and we're gonna turn on some auto smooth there to give it some ridges so it looks a little bit more like a screw. Down here at the bottom, same story. We're gonna add a circle, maybe a cylinder this time. 24 vertices. Scale it down. Small cylinder, which is going to connect all this to the rest of the shape there. Maybe if you want to go a bit, a little bit more into detail, you can do a couple more iterations on this uh, cylinder right there. The bevels over there. This is really up to you how, how far into detail you want to go there. And then we have this kind of square shape here. So for that, we're going to go ahead and add a circle. It's going to have, let's say, eight. It's going to have 12 vertices, okay? 12 vertices. 12 vertices. And then we're going to take the opposite on each corner. I'm going to scale it inwards. And as you can see, this kind of starts getting the shape that we have over there. Okay. And then if we combine this with a subdivision surface modifier, we might just get the shape that we need there. Meaning if we add two loop cuts there, 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 and there, we are very close to the shape that we need. Okay, so we can also go a little bit further and uh, add a couple more loop cuts. Uh, not loop cuts, but a couple more bevels here just to sharpen these edges. Sharpen these edges a little more. And we're going to bring these in a little bit closer together. And that gives us that nice star shape, four point star. This is pretty much exactly what we want. So uh, let's fill those in. 
and let's add a loop cut to the top, a loop cut to the bottom. And uh, that's going to be pretty much what we want. We're going to remove, we're going to apply the subdivision surface without the top and the bottom face. We're going to apply those. And then we're just going to fill in the face at the top, the face at the bottom. And we're going to bevel those a little. Because otherwise we get those messy shading issues that we sometimes tend to get with the subdivision surface modifier. Okay. Now this should be uh, considerably larger, like that. And then, of course, we need another cylinder at the bottom here. Or we're just going to use a circle. 24 vertices. 24 vertices extruded out once. Extruded out once. Extruded out again. For the other circle. And then make sure that's filled in. And duplicate that, scale it down, and extrude it again. And then one more time in this part, we're going to bevel. Scale it inwards and we're going to bevel it. We're going to bevel it so that we, uh, so that it gives us this kind of shape that we have at the bottom there. Okay. And this is more or less the shape that we want there. Okay, so it's, let's kind of join all this together, merge it all into one object. Shade everything smooth and turn on auto smooth for everything at 45 degrees. And now we have that little detail. Correct the normals and there we go. Now let's take another break before we get back to modeling some of these other details here. Thank you for watching guys. Stay tuned for part three of this uh, modeling series. If you like this video, uh, please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them down below because I always do my best to answer as many comments and questions as I can. I hope to see you guys around.